Hi, welcome to my channel. In this video, we're going to build upon what we learned in the previous videos about the Arduino microcontroller. And this is where it starts to get interesting. Uh, we start to get a hint at what the microcontroller brings to the table. Uh, the past video, we just used the microcontroller as a 5 volt supply and built a static circuit with a switch in it that allowed us to turn an LED on and off. But in this video we're going to introduce programming. And with the programming we're going to show how the microcontroller can read information from the outside world, process that information based on the program we're going to write, and then react to that new information by manipulating the outside world with voltages. So let's take a quick look at the circuit that I've already gone ahead and wired up uh, on the breadboard. Okay, just real quick, let's take a look at this circuit. Uh, this switch is normally open, meaning I have to press it to close this switch. So it'll start, pin 2 will have 0 volts on it. So the way the program is written, zero volts will light pin three. It'll make pin three high. So the, this LED will light up and four and five will be low. So these two red LEDs will not be on. It's only when this switch is closed that the green LED will go off and these two red LEDs will start flashing hopefully so let's go take a look at the code that will read information from this circuit and then respond to that information okay let's take a look at the code that will read the information from that switch and then allow us to mani manipulate the LEDs so the book that comes with the starter kit, um, you don't have to write all that code. Although writing the code does reinforce the lear learning process, why reinvent the wheel? If you go to files here and you see we have examples and here under starter kit we have all the code available for each chapter in that book. So here we have chapter two. Let's take a look at the code. Now here also we have a list of the parts that are required uh, for the circuit for this chapter. And here we have comments, which is always good programming practice uh, for the person uh, when you write your code to let other people uh, it informs other people what each part of the code does so they don't have to read the code and figure it out themselves. We have a brief description of what uh, each line of code is, is doing. Now the first bit of code here we have integer switch state equal to zero. Now what we're doing here is we're declaring uh, space in memory on the microcontroller chip uh, and we're giving that space a name and we're calling it switch state. So it's always a good idea to name the variable uh, that sort of um, has something to do with what that variable is doing. So this is the state of the switch that we're going to press on and off. So we're calling it an integer. We're declaring this variable an integer. And that means it's just going to be a whole number, no decimal points uh, in this number. And we're going to initialize it. So there's no uh, surprises. We're, we're going to know right off the bat that there's going to be a zero in this memory location. So next, we have a uh, code for declaring a function. A function is a piece of a program that then gives us access to other commands, uh, pre-assembled pieces of programs, so we don't have to write them all over again. So 
void setup is calling the function setup which then gives us access to commands that allow us to set the pins, the digital pins on the controller uh, set them to either outputs or inputs. So pin mode uh, command or function requires two arguments, two other pieces of information. What pin and what we want that pin to be. So pin 3 we want to be an output, pin 4 we want to be an output, pin 5 we want to be an output. And next uh, pin 2 is going to be different. Pin 2 we want to be an input. Pin 2 will read the voltage from the switch and give that information to the microcontroller. The next function is a loop and a loop is just something that well it's a loop it will repeat the commands or functions within that loop over and over again until we tell it not to based on some information. So here we have comments that we're now going to read the value that's stored in the variable or in the switch. So now we're going to read the value of the switch and we're going to use the command digital read. So here we have switch state equal to digital read 2. So digital read command is going to read what's on pin 2 and pass that information or that value to switch state. So if the button is not pressed we want one thing to happen and if it is pressed we want something else to happen. So if the button is not pressed if switch state here we're not we're not assigning a value to switch state we're not transfer it's going to it's comparing it's going to make a comparison now which is different so it's going switch state we're going to see if what's in switch state is low if it is low we want to use these commands digital write 3 4 and 5 we want to write pin 3 high. We want to write to pin 4 low. Now in digital we're always talking either two values a 5 and a, and a 0. 5 volts is a high and a no volts or 0 volts is a low. So if switch, if the value in switch is equal to a low, if they're the same we want to write an output to pin 3 to be high, 4 low, and 5 low. So if this occurs, if we have this state, do this, else drop down and do this. So if this is a high do this. So if if this is not a low it'll come down here and instead of setting 3 to high it'll set it to low. 4 will still be a low and we will write 5 as a high. Now we want to introduce some blinking to these LEDs. Normally, it'll blink too fast for the eye to perceive it, so we have to introduce some delay. And we do this with this command, the delay command. 250 represents a quarter of a second, so we are introducing a delay of a quarter of a second, which the eye will then be able to pick up. And we will also switch these values for 4 and 5 after this delay. That'll bring in the perception of blinking on the LEDs. Once it's done this it'll go up to the top here and it'll do all this over again. So let's go take a look at the circuit actually functioning now and see if it 
follows this uh, program. So this microcontroller still has the Blink program on it, uh, and that will be overwritten once we load this new program on. So let's go ahead and upload that program, and we should see the receive and transmit LEDs flash. There they, there they go. Oh, so what do you know? The green LED is on, uh, just as we predicted based on the way the program is written. So let's see if uh, prediction is correct as to what will now happen when we press the switch. So press the switch. See that? It's a momentary switch, so once you take the pressure off, it is then uh, open again. So we close the switch and we get that loop. We have the LEDs. So the loop is always running and it's monitor monitoring this switch voltage or the voltage on pin uh, 2. So let's do that again. So now it gets interesting. Now we're showing the flexibility or the possibilities that we start to get with the microcontroller and programming with the hardware. We start to manipulate the hardware based on reading information from the hardware. So a quick review with the help of programming, we were, we were able to read data in to the microcontroller and make decisions based on that information and then write, inf write voltages or information out to the outside world and manipulate the external circuit. So I hope you've learned something. I hope you found this video informative and not too confusing. And uh, stay tuned as we progress with learning about uh, the Arduino Uno and its capabilities as we move on to more complex circuits and programming. So thanks for watching. Feel free to subscribe and or comment. And see you next video.